Hi, it's Elise here at Bowman Library with a whole new teen book spotlight. So for this week, we are taking a look at books that kind of explore either our inner artist or our character's inner artist. That's right, we're taking a look at books that deal with creativity in different ways. Just keep in mind, like, art doesn't mean you sit down and you paint or you draw. Art can be anything from photography to movie making to video game design to cooking to if it requires you to be creative and use a different part of your brain that's art we all have some inner artists in us so we're going to take a look at six books today that explore either inner artists again in our characters or maybe they'll help encourage us or bring out some of our own inner artists so let's get started our first one for today is i'll give you the sun so jude and noah are fraternal twins they are growing artists and they are inseparable until they find themselves competing from everything from their parents attention to that one spot at this prestigious art school that they both really want to get into and even the same boys now they both have this ability to not only help each other but then to also tear each other down and before they know it they are growing apart and the gap between them just keeps bigger and bigger and bigger especially as the family starts to go through some pretty hard trials and hardships now jude uses art to express her feelings well noah it's kind of left alone on his own end to try to cope with everything. And it's told in both of their points of view. Now, we get Noah's point of view when he is 13 years old, and then we also get his sister Jude's point of view when she is 16. But then the whole story comes together in the end, and you find yourself cheering for both of these siblings who have their lives taken in two different directions after a horrific tragedy occurs, not just to come back together and find themselves whole in one of each other's relationships. This is I'll Give You the Sun. Our next one is An Enchantment of Ravens. So 17 year old Isabel is a master talented painter and she finds herself in demand by the fair folk for her skill. Now the fair folk is this group of people, they live in the forest that like is the boundary of the town where Isabel's living. The fair folk, they cannot paint, they don't have any of that type of skill. So they ask Isabel to do that type of stuff for her. Now when she is hired to paint the portrait of the Autumn Prince, who is known as Rook, her world is completely changed. Now, when she completes his painting and it is shown off, there's a big grand reveal in front of all of his subjects. She adds this sadness to his eyes that she sees in his eyes. When she sits down to paint him, she's not making up, it's really there. And when when everyone sees what they what she's done, Rook is offended. He thinks, you know, the people, his people can't take him seriously anymore. So in his, his, his opinion, his idea, the best way to handle this is he goes and he kidnaps Isabel. So she can then stand trial in his kingdom because again, she's made him seem weak to people. There must be some sort of treasonous act in here. And as they forge deeper into the kingdom now, Isabel can't help but notice that things don't seem all that right in this place. There's something that's going on that she just can't put a finger on. And it may be up to her and Rook to make things right. And there is kind of one other thing going on while all this is taking place. It's illegal for fair folk and human to fall in love. And as Isabel and Rook spend more time together and they start to, you know, teeter on the edge of their feelings, that's going to come into play too. So this standalone fantasy is packed with adventure. There's fairies, there's romance, there's humor. Like Isabel is a sharp-witted character that she doesn't take nothing from nobody. This is an enchantment of ravens. Page by page. So Paige is 16 years old, and not only is that a tough time for anyone, 16, trying to figure out who you are, you know, you're trying to figure out what you are. She's also been forced to leave her hometown in Virginia to move to Brooklyn, which is like completely different from everything she has ever known. Now, not knowing anyone, the only friend that she has is her sketchbook, which basically becomes her journal for the next eight months of her life. You will be along with Paige on her journey trying to figure out who she is as an individual, what it's like to be a new person at school, developing new friendships as well as possible romances for the first time. And then 
expanding on those relationships, including the one with our mom that it can be tenuous at times. And while trying to do all that, trying to be true to herself. You will enjoy this journey of self-discovery. It's one that everyone can relate to in this graphic novel. And again, there's ones that we've all been 16. You might be 16. You might be becoming 16. You know what it's like. This is all about, again, finding who you really are all while doing it instead of the writing through drawing. This is page by page. From Twinkle with Love. Okay, so 16 year old Twinkle Mehra wants to become a filmmaker, but she's also dealing with her own high school problems. First, there's the best friend who is acting incredibly weird and standoffish to her. She has no idea what Maddie's problem is, can't figure it out. And then she's in love with a guy. His name is Neil, but Neil doesn't even know she exists. And then there is the twin brother of Neil, the guy she likes. His name is Sahil, and he is being very attentive toward her, and Twinkle does not want, know what to make of this, and yeah, like, she likes Neil, not Sahil. Now, knowing for her love of filmmaking, though, Sahil asks Twinkle if she would like to partner with him to make a movie in order to enter it for the upcoming Midsummer's Arts Festival. And Twinkle can't turn this off or down. As she's trying to think about getting into film school, she's going to need some stuff to present. And th this is too good of an offer. So as the two of them start working together and Twinkle starts to see Sahil in a different light, Twinkle then starts receiving these mysterious emails from this secret admirer. And they have to be from Neil, right? That's the only person it makes sense coming from. Like, maybe, like... Yeah, it has to be from Neil. So this is told through Twinkle's journal entries, as well as there's text messages, there's emails, and Sahil's blog post. So you get both points of their view. It's going to be up to Twinkle in the end to decide what it is that she wants. What is it that she wants to do? Does, is filmmaking really this passion? What is she willing to do for it? And who does she want to be as an individual as she's trying to figure out all these other relationships? This is from Twinkle with Love. The Unfinished Life of Addison Stone. So this is kind of different. This is a faux biography. This is a biography about a made up character named Addison Stone. And we meet her as she's this ever increasing famous photography artist. And she's from this small town and she's 17 years old and she has made it big. She's become like this like creative genius who now finds herself in New York City and her life has become this whirlwind. She can barely keep up with it. She's at industry parties. No one can get enough of her. And then at the age of 18, just a year later, she tragically dies. This tells her story from those who loved her to those who influenced her careers and maybe those that should have stayed away from her. You will be wrapped up in the mystery of Addison Stone and you'll be second guessing that what takes place away from everyone else, that you're going to get everyone's pieces of her life but not Addison Stone's version of her life. This is a realistic look at life, even though it didn't exist in reality. Again, she's a made up person, but it's one that could very well exist today. There's discussions of mental illness, so just be aware, but if you like a good drama and you're reading, then this is the book you need to check out. This is a unique one. This is a unique point of view. This is The Unfinished Life of Addison Stone. And our last one is Blood Water Paint. So 17-year-old Artisma has lived the past five years with her mediocre painter and abusive father, being his apprentice. Now, her job is to get the canvas ready, the mixed colors, and then she finishes paintings for him that he cannot complete. He's just not capable of it. And but she is. That's how good of a painter she is. Like her father gets fame because of her work but she doesn't get any of the credit. Now, Artisma decides that she can be a better painter than her father, but she needs to hone her skill. So she starts to take lessons on perspective from this fellow artist named Agostino Tassi. And at first, it is everything more than what she could imagine. It, it totally transforms her painting and her skill. Now, at first, she starts being treated by Tassi's equal. And her paintings are more alive than they ever have been, but soon things start to change as Tassi begins to exert this dominance over her, and then eventually he sexually assaults her. When she figures out that Tassi has used her, like he's passing off some of her work as his, 
Artisma decides that is the time is now. It is now time for her to stand up, and she does something that's unthinkable for the time. She brings him to court in order to save her honor. Now, this is based on the real life of Baroque painter Artisma Gentisilli, who was alive from 1593 to 1653. That is when our story is set. And this novel and verse is one that, even though it's about someone from over 400 years ago, it is a life that's relatable today. It's a situation that still happens today. Maybe not necessarily in painting, but in a number of other ways as well. You will not be able to put this one down and you will then turn around and you will start doing your own research about this incredibly strong female painter once you're done reading this amazing story because she changed society and we didn't even know it until maybe we got to this book. This is a must read. This is blood water paint. So these are the six books that we have at the library that deal with people who are inspired by art, who are artists in their own way. Maybe they'll inspire you to become an artist in your own way. So I encourage you to come on out, check out one of these, or we do have others that explore inner artists as well. I hope you have a great week, and I hope you tune back next week when we have a whole new Teen Book Spotlight.